Scott Lucas, who joins us uh, from the UK. Uh, Scott, you're, of course, professor of international politics at Birmingham University. Thanks for being with us, as always. Let's speak about Trump and how he's responded to all this breaking in the last few days. He, in his defense, he's using uh, what he alleges, actually, Joe Biden and his son did. The question is, what does that have to do with anything uh, in 2019? Will people actually buy that as some kind of defense here? Well, the starting point is, is that Donald Trump is using uh, a conspiracy theory, which is disinformation, which is that Joe Biden, when he went as vice president on behalf of the Obama administration in 2016 and told the Ukraine government, look, we have a concern about corruption, that Biden did so because he was trying to stop an investigation into his son, who is an official with a Ukraine gas company. Now, in fact, the Ukraine authorities have said, uh, American authorities have said, that that's absolutely untrue. Biden was there talking about general issues of corruption in, uh, in the Ukraine. And when the Ukraine prosecutor was removed that year, it was by the Ukrainian parliament. It was their own decision to act against corruption. But of course, it doesn't matter whether it's true or false if you're Donald Trump and his supporters. If you can convince enough people that it might be true, you create so much confusion, you create so much suspicion that rather than Donald Trump being the focus of an investigation, you divert it onto Joe Biden. And that's why Donald Trump will say fake news, hoax, witch hunt, because after all, even though the Trump-Russia investigation found quite clearly that Donald Trump uh, may have obstructed justice, which is a criminal act, that the Trump campaign was linked to the Russians in 2016, that they did know of criminal activity, such as the hacking of Democratic uh, computers, the narrative for many people is that this was all a stitch up and that Donald Trump was supposedly cleared of any guilt over the Trump-Russia affair. So why not try the same tactics here with Trump in Ukraine? Right. Uh it's amazing that he can kind of talk his way out of bringing up the issue at all, uh, given that, th I mean, there's no movement in Ukraine itself to investigate Viktor Shokin's resignation. So again, that question, why can he even bring this up at this point? What does it have to do with anything in 2019? Because if Donald Trump was to talk about 2019, and if he was to talk about the facts are there, he would have to talk about what the evidence clearly shows in his coming out, which is that he did pressure Vladimir Zelensky, a president of another country, to interfere in a U.S. election, which is a crime. It's a violation of federal electoral law. That he did, at least it is implied, that uh, the Ukraine would not get military aid unless Zelensky investigated Biden which is a compromising of U.S. foreign policy for Trump's personal interest. That's if he stuck with 2019. But in this age of social media, where you could just put out a tweet, you can change the narrative. Don't talk about 2019. Talk about what happened three years ago. Don't talk about what we factually know now. Talk about this conspiracy theory, because Trump has his supporters to do it. Remember, his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, has been trying for almost a year to dig up dirt on Joe Biden. Remember that there are U.S. networks and I won't name them here, but these are national networks who will put out anything the Trump administration says, including the disinformation, and says that's what we need to talk about. And most importantly, remember that there are many Republican congressmen who will support this disinformation because they are protecting Trump from impeachment. That's their priority, right. not at getting at the truth of what happened. Okay, since it really is all now about the spin and the political strategy, do you think, in a way, the Democrats made a mistake? Uh, they really hyped the Mueller report. There was so much in the lead up to that, that it would expose Trump for corruption, and it didn't. And now there's this feeling among many that you're doing it again, only it's not a report we're waiting for. It's just these <gasps> transcripts that are supposed to reveal the smoking gun. The Trump line already will be that this is a political mistake by the Democrats, that the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is held hostage by extremists, but this will only increase the support for Trump, and he'll win a glorious second term next year. Now, politically, we have to see if that will happen. Donald Trump will probably not be removed from office because of the Republican-controlled Senate. He will fight for re-election. It will be up to the American voters. But there's something beyond politics here. Let me just speak personally. In both the Trump-Russia case and in this case, we are talking about possible crimes being committed. 
we are talking about a serious, unprecedented interference in U.S. democracy and in U.S. elections. If you do not investigate this, then you do not deal with those issues. Not just a Donald Trump, but anybody else can feel that they are at liberty to basically accept foreign interference and they can strike and stomp on the U.S. Constitution and rip up the American system. So there's something beyond politics here. It's basic, basic ethics and values that means that an investigation is warranted whichever way it leads. It's a frightening precedent uh, possibly being set here. Okay, Scott Lucas, thanks so much for that. As always, we appreciate it.